coverage. Government promotes a public-private partnership to guarantee accessible and affordable curative and palliative cure for all. The components of the scheme in this newscast. 30 players of the Intermediate Lions will come from September 15 to 29 ahead of the Shan 2021. The list of the pre-selected is published by head coach Yves Clément Aroga. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. We begin our 30-minute newscast with the ravaging waters that have led to the collapse of the Pala Bridge in the far north region. The bridge, which links Marwa to Kusiri and the Chadian capital in Jamina, gave way after last night's torrent rains. The town of Marwa is flooded and power supply interrupted. Henry Tato Ekambi reports that Governor Miji Abubakari has been on the field to evaluate the damage and to propose solutions. Popularly known in Marua as Pong Pala, collapsed at around 8 a.m. Monday morning after torrential rains on Sunday nights. Though no one died in the unfortunate incident, circulation along the National Road No. 1 from Marua will be perturbed. I was just filming the huge run of water under the bridge and I heard the pillars of the bridge cracking. There were two bikes crossing but they succeeded to cross before it collapsed. The heavy downpour also left the far north capital in flood waters with key electricity lines also falling to the ground. Some other bridges are very old and uh, we do think that uh, something is necessary to do. And as far as the uh, palace is concerned, we are, will inform the high ranking to rehabilitate the small break to uh, enable uh, drugs to go through a uh, neighboring division or neighboring country. As the rainy season intensifies, there is fear that the upcoming torrential rains will cause more damage if nothing is done urgently. Power supply in Gida and in Marwa is interrupted due to the destruction of a pylon caused by heavy rains. The incident has led to a general blackout in Marwa and other parts of the Far North region. Mokolo, Mura, Kaele, Bogo, Maga, Yagwa and Kusiri have also been affected. So natural teams are currently on the field to assess the extent of the damage and to ensure that the region is provided electricity in the hours ahead. Registration on electoral roll throughout the national territory will officially close today, August 31, 2020, at midnight. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the registration has been timid, and in some three Elekim Council branches visited in Yaoundé, there is no effervescence. Beatrice Ngum reports that registering on the electoral list gives voters a chance to choose their leaders. At the Yondo 2 Elekam Council branch, the first potential voter walked in at exactly 9.33 a.m. Here we are told an average of one to six Cameroonians can stop by daily to register. It is that last day today, so I needed to come and register. In Yaoundé 7 at Oyomaban, the same atmosphere reigns. The staff is on seat, but potential voters are few and far between. Branch officials say the registration is timid because they've not been to the field for a door-to-door -door campaign because of COVID-19. In spite of the pandemic, we receive at least five electors a day. Globally, in our branch, we have about 50 registered already. Be it in Yaoundé 2, 7 or Yaoundé 1, statistics are not impressive. Only about 10 are registered daily. Many say it's a general trend for voters' registration to drop after an election year. 
The ministers of territorial administration and of external relations have jointly summoned the resident representative of Doctors Without Borders today. The exchange which took place at the conference room of the Ministry of External Relations was to record to the authorities of the association the need to strictly respect neutrality in their field operations in Cameroon. Ministers Paul Atanganji and Lejeune Bilambila reminded Doctors Without Borders to work in compliance with the laws of the land and the respect of the engagements to Cameroon as a sovereign state. There is a change at the helm of Cameroon's diplomatic mission in Equatorial Guinea. Uwono Jean-Claude Desiree Mengele is the new ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to Equatorial Guinea appointed by a presidential decree. He replaces His Excellency Lazam Paul Mbala. Charles Ibune has the details. Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea just reset relations on their security front line and here comes the new chief Cameroonian diplomat to Equatorial Guinea to cable the lines between Yaoundé and Malabo. My feeling is uh, a very good surprise first of all and also to glorify the almighty God for having inspired His Excellency Paul Bia head of set to choose my humble person. Extraordinary and plenipotentiary, Owono Jean-Claude Desire is a seasoned diplomat who spent years at the Cameroon Embassy Mission in Moscow, Russia, and was United Nations Director at the Ministry of External Relations. I learned the news while I was attending a family function, and uh, somebody approached me to say, has heard my name, uh, during the 5 p.m. news, CRTV. A graduate from the International Relations Institute of Cameroon, the new Cameroonian ambassador to Equatorial Guinea, is a world of experience in economics, diplomacy, and public finance. In one of our top stories, access to health care is a fundamental right which places a legal obligation on states to ensure access to timely, acceptable and affordable quality health care for its citizens. Following a public-private partnership signed in Yaoundé last Thursday, the government of Cameroon has expressed its commitment to see the universal health coverage scheme implemented. Konstantin Bong now has on the strides made so far as outlined in the National Health Development Plan. Setting up of a universal health coverage scheme in Cameroon was a promise made by President Paul Bia at the start of his current mandate. It is becoming a reality following a public-private partnership signed by the Minister of Public Health and Sante Universal Cameroon SA on August 27, 2020, supervised by the Prime Minister. The company, which is a joint venture between Cameroonian and Korean investors, will perform all the related commercial and financial operations. It will collect all social contributions from economic agents in the informal sector and pool the funds dedicated to the management of universal health coverage. It will also sign contracts with public and private health facilities. Everybody who is Cameroonian, who is staying in Cameroon, will have the obligation to be part of the universal Co uh, health coverage and they will benefit of all the services they will have to to pay a fee studies in Cameroon have shown that about 64 percent of households cannot access health care because of the high costs establishing a universal health coverage comes to remedy the situation as access to health care is a fundamental human right which places a legal obligation on states to ensure access to timely acceptable and affordable quality health care for its citizens the Universal Health Coverage Project that has been in gestation for over a decade in the country will go a long way to expose all inhabitants to preventive, curative and palliative health services they need. For this to be achieved, it is critical that investments in quality primary health care increased and the workforce improved. In the following report, Iwane Pole looks at who the beneficiaries will be. The Universal Health Coverage Public-Private Partnership contract is a high moment in government activities as it has come to crown the very high directives of the head of state, President Paul Bia. Public and private health institutions have welcomed the initiative, promising to work tooth and nail to honor its obligations. It is a specific insurance for, for people to take care of health the structure has to be 
in conformity with what the government has decided. We are very glad that that opportunity come, not only for hospitals, but also for patients. According to the Inspector General in the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Yves Mathieu Zwananga, the health insurance aim at enrolling all Cameroonians. They will be identified and will benefit a biometric card to gain access to the universal health services expected to commence by the year 2021. The goal of universal health coverage is to ensure that all people obtain the health services they need without suffering financial hardship when paying for them. Experts in the insurance sector have welcomed with enthusiasm the scheme which some Cameroonians have hitherto called for its implementation. Franklin Kong, an insurance expert, now talks on how the plan has been categorized. Take a look. It is well, well stratified. It's not like everybody who's going to pay the same amount. No. Somebody, for example, who earns 100,000 francs will not be contributing like somebody who earns 38,000 francs. Those who are not affiliated to say NPS, it will be pretty difficult for them to be assisted because how are they going to be uh, identified? We only need to be in relation to the National Social Insurance Fund to be able to get our cards and have access to these uh, health facilities. The aim of this universal coverage is to make sure that they reduce out-of-pocket payments. We only need to ask on the stakeholders to be able to multiply their way of sensitization of Cameroonians because, you know, one thing is that Cameroonians are so lukewarm when it comes to insurance. Still in health news, today is the 18th edition of Traditional Medicine Day, celebrated on the theme, Two Decades of Traditional Medicine Achievements from 2002 to 2020. It is an occasion to encourage synergy between African medicine and scientific medicine to address the mental and physical health of the population. Shanslin Nanze reports on the practice in the West region. African traditional medicine has over the years been neglected by many who argue that the herbs collected from the abundance of nature are evil. But with the advent of the coronavirus, many Bafusam city dwellers have resorted to the use of traditional medicine. It doesn't only treat COVID-19, but other illnesses such as cough and catar. I am satisfied with traditional medicine. I take turmeric every morning, ginger, aloe vera, and other herbs that our grandmom prepares for us. Traditional healers say the outbreak of COVID-19 has brought respect to the practice. Many people are now consuming traditional medicine because of COVID. They now value their own medicine. Their desire is for the state to regulate their sector so that they can operate freely. The National Youth Council has taken its anti-COVID-19 caravan to the East region, training and sensitizing the population on the need to respect barrier measures. Led by its national president, Farimato Iyawa, and supported by Minister Joseph Ley, the council members not only preached on civic education and volunteerism, they also distributed face masks in markets. Tala LT tells us more. The Cameroon National Youth Council's anti-COVID-19 caravan along some streets of Abombang had on board its national president, Fadimatu Iyawam, as well as members of the decentralized services of the CNYC in the East region who were accompanied by Minister Joseph Lee, an elite of the Opanyong Division. Since yesterday, we have uh, done some training of the young Cameroonian leaders for the Cameroon National Youth Council of the different subdivisions. The national coordinator of the Japabi, Michel Aka, in his address to the youth on patriotism and peaceful coexistence, promised his support to the CNYC anti-COVID-19 campaign. We noticed in towns like San Melima, Balmayo, and Ebolova that many people no longer put on face masks, but the authorities in place, as well as volunteers like us, have to keep on reminding the population on the importance of this practice. A significant consignment of anti-COVID gears like buckets, soaps, face masks and others were handed to youth in the presence of Mr. Joseph Lee, who was designated an anti-COVID-19 ambassador in the East region by the national president of the CNYC.
the wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. In religious news, the Catholic Men's Association has been charting a way forward to build a group spiritually and to impact lives. This was in the course of an annual meeting in Boya, chaired by the national president, Johnson Oke. It was closed by a man celebrated by Bishop Michael Bibi, as we hear this report by Charles Abuno from Boya. The CMA enlarged National ESCO annual meeting brought together all the diocesan presidents in Cameroon, their executives, as well as special invitees. It was a forum for them to assess the activities of the movement and brainstorm on how to make it more effective within the church. We are represented in 16 dioceses out of the 23 in the Republic of Cameroon with a membership of about 6,000. It was also an opportunity to deliberate on some very important projects of the CME, one of which is the National Secretariat of the Movement, which is under construction in Boya. They have an elaborate plan that is supposed to give us not only the national office, but a spiritual center and other social activities uh, that will not only help the CME, but Boya being a land of legendary hospitality. The meeting ended with a holy mass celebrated by Bishop Michael Bibi. Slightly earlier than 7.50, we'll take you to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center where there is an impressive use of face masks and disrespect of physical distancing nowadays in social gatherings like weddings and birthday parties. This public health experts hold is likely to increase the spread of the coronavirus that government is struggling to curb. Bob in Sama is at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center and talks about how risky such attitudes can be with his guest, Dr. Frank Amabo. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kivan. Welcome. Statistics from public health experts actually indicate that most of those who have been tested positive for COVID-19 got infected uh, during most of these social gatherings, be it birthdays or weddings, simply because most of these persons failed to respect uh, uh, most of these outlined measures by the government to limit the spread of the coronavirus. How risky is it to attend some of these social gatherings during this period that we have the spread of the coronavirus? That is what we shall be discussing tonight with our guest, Dr. Frank Amabo. He is an epidemiologist. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, Baldwin. During these periods that we have the spread of the coronavirus, uh, most persons still continue attending some of these social gatherings, birthdays, uh, weddings. Uh, what message do you have for such personalities uh, talking about the spread of coronavirus and attending these gatherings? Well, first of all, thank you, Balun. I think that's a very, very pertinent observation. I will first of all like to remind the general public that public gatherings are an extremely high risk environment for COVID-19, but also for other infectious diseases like cholera and measles that are currently plaguing several regions in the country. Thus, I would recommend strongly that during epidemics like the COVID-19 pandemic that we have ongoing, it's important to avoid such public gatherings as they are a means for transmission of disease. If it is indispensable to be in those gatherings, it is important that we respect the recommended precautions to avoid infection when being in those places. And one of the highlights for some of these ceremonies, weddings or birthdays, uh, we have noticed that the virus can easily be transmitted uh, through communication. We have a lot of singing during such, of, such ceremonies. You, and, uh, as an epidemiologist, uh, uh, what message do you have to send across to these persons who attend some of these gatherings? I think, once again, that's a very, very important point you're making. It's important to highlight that the COVID-19 is transmitted by a droplet infection. So notably, when people speak, when people sing, when people sneeze or cough, droplets can leave 
and infect the person that is nearby. So it's important that we reiterate for our general public, and we're glad to have an audience such as this, that it's important to respect the standard precautions, notably to be able to wear a face mask as it will protect the person in front of you, to respect cough or respiratory etiquette, such as coughing in a handkerchief that you can throw away or in your elbow in the advent you do not have one, to make sure we respect hand hygiene. In public places, we create a lot of people. If we do that, we would avoid a lot of infections. And finally, the physical distancing. It is important that we socially interact, but that we keep that physical distance for this disease. And I would like to add that in the advent of any disease, it's important to call your toll-free number, which is 1510, or to meet the nearest health facility. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Frank Amabo. You are an epidemiologist for being a guest this evening. And equally, during the uh, traditional press briefing, uh, public health experts use the opportunity to remind communities that, in as much as it's um, it is important to attend uh, most of uh, these gatherings, but you should choose either between your health and attending these uh, social gatherings, because if you should attend one, it should be very, very important. And when you attend these, you should not fail to uh, respect all these barrier measures so as to avoid any possible. Uh, spread of the coronavirus. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thanks very much, Balding. It is true that life continues. There is need to celebrate, but as we celebrate, we should remain vigilant and cautious while we make merry. In our discovery tonight, we walk you through to the production of the locally made attire called Atogo. The fabric and exquisite designs have transcended boundaries considered not just as a Bamenda dress, but a made in Cameroon brand. What does the fabric and the distinct stitches signify? Karin Tosem has been finding out. The attire was one exceptional in traditional ceremonies in the past. Now, it is fast becoming the trending outfit. Embroidery of the traditional attires of the Northwest is not haphazardly done. You have the single hat design and you have the double hat design. You also have the gong design. The gong in the Northwest rallies the population on occasion. The gong informs people of the arrival of a phone. The Atogo is no longer just a traditional outfit here. Now it's Togo that we say is one during traditional world, the traditional occasion, the cultural occasion, or any other responsible occasion. The regalia is worn alongside other accessories. This is a cap. And it's used by the form for king makers. When you dress, you put on this bit. This one is for men. We have variety of the beads. And then this one also is beads used by women on the various female dresses. Many people are taking interest in the production of the Atogo outfit because the dress is in high demand both in Cameroon and abroad and is currently a source of employment for lots of people in the region. Now into sports, a list of 30 players of Cameroon's Intermediate Lions pre-selected and called to camp has been made public by the head coach Yves Clément Aroga. This is ahead of the 2021 African Nations Championship to take place in Cameroon. Although the majority selected have been in previous trainings, defender Alphonse Marie Tienchu will be absent. Bob in summer reports that the camp will go from September 15 to 29. The 30 players called to come by coach Yves Clement Avoga are selected from different elite one teams in Cameroon and will each have to prove their worth. Three goalkeepers are selected, among them Simon Omosola of Bambutu Sombuda, Epane Litizi of Stad Vena of Melon, and Dande Jr. of Apeje Sonfu. Eight defenders are called to camp with the conspicuous presence of Toma Etabawak of Cotton Sport of Garoua and Serge Andulu of Union Sportif of Douala. The midfield compartment will be handled by 13 players, among them Maestros, Mark Nkongo Ojong, Renindi, and Ulrich Lobe, all of Bambutu Sombuda. Meanwhile, the attacking machinery will count on six attackers with Samuel Len, Leon Boyomo, and Bape Muller to take the lead. Conspicuously absent from the list, Atievi Akono and Alphonse Maritienche were featured in the previous list. The intermediate slams of Camp Bruna are due to begin camping on Tuesday, September 15 to September 29, after which a new list of players for the next camp will be published. 
And that brings us to the end of the 7.30 news. But before we go, a recap of our major stories. The Pala Bridge in the Far North region has given way and Marua is cut off from Kiseri after torrential rains. Governor Mijiawa Bakari has been on the field to assess the damage as the town of Marua is without electricity following the destruction of pylons. Universal health coverage for all government is promoting a public-private partnership to guarantee accessible and affordable curative and palliative cure for all the components of the scheme and who the beneficiaries will be were on this newscast. And finally, in sports, 30 players of the Intermediate Lions will come from September 15 to 29 ahead of the Shan 2021 in Cameroon. The list of the pre-selected players was published today by head coach Eve Klima Aroga. More news will be coming up at 8.30 p.m. with Rob Miach. We say I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to our programs on CRTV. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing 